everybody, Stamp with Lorraine here. Today we're going to do a great little fun fold card with the Birds and Branches stamp set. It has coordinating dies, birds and more dies, but we're not using those today. We'll use those another day. So here's the fun fold we'll be doing today. So open it up and here's your fun fold. Ooh, isn't that fun? When you close it, that little die cut fits right into that little window there. Kind of like a little puzzle piece just sticking in there. Then you open it up and you have a special little saying inside with that theme of the branches coming in again. So let's get right to it very quickly. Um, I'm going to start with So Saffron cardstock. Your regular card base starting with five and a half by eight and a half. Scored in the middle, four and a quarter. So that's what you're going to start with. And then you're going to decide what shape you want to die cut. It could be circles like mine. It could be square or rectangle or oval. But you want to get two die cuts that are slight. One is slightly bigger than the other to give you that layered look. So I chose the layering circles. I have the scallop and then I have the smaller straight edge to go on the middle. So we're going to die cut this right on the card front. Make sure you open it when you run it through your big shot. So pretend we have that all done and voila, here we go. Nice and easy did that already for us. So that's going to be right in your card front there. Okay, so then next we are going to want to stamp a little something on the front there. So we're going to use So Saffron ink, color on color, tone on tone to add a little design, a little background there, because otherwise it's a little just too plain. So I'm just going to take the leaf part from the Birds and Branches stamp set and use that as little splotches, little leaves to go around the front of the card. And it does look a little um, like a watercolor look, not quite a real, real solid image. So that's kind of nice. So it's a little more subtle that way. Okay, so there we go. And I'm going to clean this off because we're going to need it later for the green leaves. So using my chamois, and you can see it's well used. Keep it in one of our nice little cases there. And I'll put that aside to use with the green leaves a little bit later. So now for our inside, we'll put that aside. Oh, by the way, we're saving our scallop circle as well because that's what's going to go on our fold on the inside. Okay, so those two aside, we're going to take our very vanilla, which is cut down to be a little shorter than what the inside is here because we wanted to actually leave that eighth inch border around here. So it's going to be five and a quarter by eight. So when we score it in the middle, we'll have four inches there. So we're going to score it four. And then two, because we want that fold to be half of that width there. Okay, so here we go. We have there's our inside, the part that's not scored. And you can see that leaves our border nicely there. And then this will get folded in the opposite direction, like a little Z. So make sure you get a nice crease on that with your bone folder. And that's going to be the inside of your card. And it will fold out like this. All right, so let's stamp the inside of our card next. I'm going to put that outside aside and let's take some branches. I'm going to use soft suede. I'm going to carry that theme of the branches and the flowers inside. And we'll use this little guy. as well. All right, we'll bring back some green leaves. I'm using Mossy Meadow. And you'll notice this 
stem is all connected. All those leaves are connected there. So it gives you lots of options for where you want to place, place your leaves. And of course, you can stamp full strength. And some will line up. Some aren't going to be perfect, but that's okay because it just gives you that little um, feeling of depth. If you stamp a second time off, you have that second generation, which is a little lighter. So it gives you an idea that those are a little bit darker, um, a little more in the distance. So okay, I'm going to do a little bit more this way, too, to kind of fill in some of those gaps there. Okay, I like the way that looks. Now let's add a little bit of flower to this. The stamp set comes with two options of flowers, a whole flower and then just a little bud. So I'm just going to use the bud just to bring a little of that in because I don't want that to be too distracting with our birds and leaves. I'll put one more here perhaps, just a little something. Okay. So that just brings some of that greenery from the outside of the card in. Okay, so now let's do our saying. I'm going to be putting a thank you on the front. So I thought for the inside, it would be nice to have from Good Morning Magnolia, not only for what you do, but for being someone so special. And I love this font where you have some of the print and some of the script and special really stands out there. So I thought that was very feminine for the style of the card. So we're going to be using that. Of course, I wanted it to be nice and straight. So I already lined it on my Stamparatus. Love this for keeping things straight. And also if it doesn't come out a nice clear stamp, you re-ink it and do it over. So I already lined it, have it set up where I want that sentiment to be and I adjusted it so it will be straight. Okay, and it will go right about there. So let's ink that with some memento. And bring it down. Stamp that there, and I think that looks good. So we'll take that off. Put the Stamparatus aside, and now we'll work on the focal point of our front card. So this is going to get glued onto here. I'll use my white glue for that. Nice thin line, go all the way around. Make sure you only put it on the part that's not scored because we want this part to open and be lots of fun. So here we are. On there nice and straight already. I can see how nice it is coming all together. All right, so now we want to put the part we cut out. We want that to be on here. And it's gonna be really easy to line up because obviously it was cut from there, so it's going to be a perfect fit. So what we're going to want to do is work with the card closed. We're going to put some adhesive on this folded part right here. And if the card is closed, you know right where to put that adhesive because this part is going to fit perfectly right back in place there. So we're going to use our stamp and seal and we want to put it right in the middle of this cutout opening because we know this is going to fit perfectly right in there. So here we go. It's a lot stronger than this the snail was. So I have my little bit of adhesive there and I'm going to fit this right back in. Okay, fits like a glove because obviously it was just cut from there. So then when we open it, we only have it adhered to the front flap of this fold here and not on the back. Alrighty, so now we're ready to put our focal point there. Okay, I already die cut a circle that will fit nicely within that scallop. Die cut it with my layering circles, use the straight edge this time, and we're going to stamp our bird on there. Now on the birds and branches, this is a two-step stamping, so the detail is on one stamp and the filler is another. The bird looks really cute even without any other 
filler, so you don't need to put that in. But I'm going to stamp the bird in black and add a little blue for the coloring over here. You also have feet. You have little feet for if he's grabbing onto the branch, and you have feet if he's standing up on the branch. So you can use either one. Be careful there is a right-facing bird. I mean, a left-facing and a right-facing bird. Make sure you match up the feet properly. Otherwise, it's, it's going to look a little awkward, a little uncomfortable standing on his branch there. So let's stamp him first in black. I have the detailed one, Memento Black. I'm going to put him right there. I want to make sure the bird fits in. That's why I'm doing the bird before the branch, because the branch can go off a little bit, but we want the whole bird there. We want to make sure he has a good place to stand. Okay, I have his little feet that are going to grab onto the branch. I'll stick that on right now. Look how cute. Oh my gosh, I just love those little guys. Okay, so we're going to make him blue. So we're using Misty Moonlight, one of the in colors, one of my favorites. I'm a blue person anyway. So remember, when you're stamping, you can always get different shades by stamping full strength and then stamping off. Look at the two different colors that you get there. Really dark navy, and then this one will be a little lighter. Obviously, this is a little too dark going against the black, so I'm going to make sure I stamp off first and then use the lighter color on my bird. And we'll stamp off, and then just line this right up over the bird. And there, now he has a little bit of color in there. Okay, not a whole lot, just enough to make them pop up a little bit. Okay, so let's get back to our branches again, our soft suede. And make sure I get it over his feet so that it looks like he's just grabbing right onto there. And I'll use the little branch to fill in some space over here. Okay, and then we're back to our mossy meadow for some green leaves. I'll stamp a few as if they're in the background there. And then we can add a couple of flowers as well. So get, getting my um, little bud there and get back my so saffron. Just enough to bring in some of that color again. There we go. All right, so he's ready to go right on top of here. I'm going to put him on there with some dimensionals. So I think maybe three will do in a little triangle pattern. Now remember, when you think you've used up all the little things on the inside, snip the edges and you can use those as well. Don't waste any of those dimensionals. I love the dimensionals. I use them so often. Okay, so we're going to put those, that little guy, right in the center there. And look, look how nicely that fits. Ta-da! All right, let's get a little ribbon on there. Of course, the misty moonlight matches perfectly. Oops, you'll need about 19, 20 inches or so. I like to start tying it while it's still on the reel so I don't waste too much, but sometimes that's a little tricky. So if you want to cut it first, I suggest maybe 20 inches will give you enough to um, it'll give you enough to tie and handle. <laughs> okay, so often when I like to tie a bow, I like my bottom. If I'm holding this sideways, one seems to go to the top, one end seems to go to the bottom. I like to use the bottom part. I hold it tight. Try to hold it with one finger. I'm going to use the bottom part for my one loop for the 
side of the bell. My other side, I go around clockwise and then poke it through. And then your bow will line up with the side of the card. As opposed to going sideways, you don't want it sticking out the side this way. Sometimes you want it to go perpendicular to where it's wrapped, but I don't want it vertical this time. So I'm going to just trim off the edge, give a little angle cut there, neaten this one up a little bit, and then we're good to go with a little bow. Of course, this is a little, this could be a little floppy and can look sloppy a little bit, so let's put a little glue dot under there. I'll take it off my little wheel here with my take a pick tool. Take the little pointer and lift up your glue dot right there and you can set it right under there where the knot is and then it will stay right on. If it sticks out a little bit, poke it in and then that stays nice and secure. Okay, now one more thing to put a little saying on the front. You don't have to. You have a nice saying on the inside and it's beautiful, but we're going to put a little thank you note on there. So one thing that I did was all these little half sheet, um, half inch strips of paper, I pre-stamped with some sentiments so that they're ready to go and I can cut them with my lovely labels. Pick a punch. Gives you three different sizes, two different of two different designs. I'm going to use this one that has a more flat end because this is um, Kind of what I tend to go to. Okay, so I'm using the half inch side. It slides right into that little groove there. And if you push it all the way in, you'll see it meets flat at the top. Now, technically, you can just slide it in like this and stamp it down like this, but I like to just make sure I like to peek in. I'm a little crazy that way. Peek in and make sure it's flat because sometimes if there's a little wiggle room to your strip, then it might come out a little crooked. Can you see how I'm kind of forcing it one way or the other? I want to make sure it's nice and even. And so I'm wiggling around and then I'm going to cut it just like that. Okay, now before I did that, I probably should have shown you what I did to try to make this an even cut on both sides. Before I cut this, I measured, even just with a little scrap piece of paper, I measured how far from the edge of my paper to the beginning of the letter. And then I took that same amount and marked it off on the other side. So I know that's how big I need my paper to be so that the word will be centered. Now here's a little bit of a trick. Because this is so small now and I want to get this in here, I can squeeze it in and still see a little bit in there. That's not too bad. I can manage it, but what if I had an even smaller piece or I wanted just a little bit more control over what I'm doing here? Well, what you can do is make sort of like a little temporary handle. You can take a scrap piece of paper and take a little bit of adhesive and pop that right on there. Just a touch, don't need much. And because we want to cut this end, I'm going to attach this other end to my scrap strip. And now I have like a longer handle so that I can stick into the groove. And I have more control over what I want to do with that. Okay, so I'm just going to take a look on the back. And when I think it's straight enough, just pop that out. Okay, then when you're done, just peel that off. And it's pretty much in the middle. Okay, so now when I was preparing this card, I was looking for something that would fit around here. I didn't want too much of a border. I wanted just a little something because this was busy enough. I didn't want a big label here. I wanted something little, but I wanted more than just the vanilla. I wanted to line it with some blue. So I was looking around. Some of my ovals were too big or some of the uh, rectangles were either too big or too skinny. It just didn't seem to fit properly. So then I started looking at the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And I, again, like I said, I was looking. I said, this was too big. It was too wide this way. It just didn't seem to be the right size. So then I was looking at this. I said, you know, oh, too bad. You know, that's not long enough. But it seemed nice this way. And then I was looking at it. I said, you know what? That 
kind of looks nice just being a little scallop on top and below and I didn't mind that the ends were hanging over so that's what I did punched it out of the misty moonlight um, I cut it rather not punched and when I line it up like that it just gives a nice little outline to the thank you to the thank you label okay I see just a little tiny edge there that I want to round off okay so that's not bad alrighty so I'm going to take my stamp and seal and a little there when you use the stamp and seal don't snap it off to the side just lean it forward and pull it up because you don't want it to it's so sticky that it can get like stringy and sort of gummy like so you don't want that to happen Okay, so on that goes there, and I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back. Okay, I think I'll, I'll cut a couple of these. And that should be just right. Okay, pull those off. And line that up here. Make sure it's straight. And our card is done. Okay, so look how it gives that nice little scallop on the top and the bottom, and we're set to go. All right, thanks for watching, and come back soon to Stamp with Lorraine.